Hey, hey, it's that time again. Good evening, I am Melanie Browning with Spotlight and I am waiting for tonight's guest who is Michael Merrill and he will be jumping on here shortly. There you are, what's up, Michael? Hey, how's it going? Good, well, it sounds good. I'm, I'm glad that this, uh, this is working out. Awesome. What have you been up to? Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know, quite a bit. It's been a few months since uh, we've talked, hasn't it? It has been. Um, it's it's been a it's been a minute. Go ahead and introduce yourself and let let the people watching um, know a little bit about um, what it is you do and you love, please. Um, yeah. So I am an indie filmmaker. Um, I primarily call myself a director and producer, but I've done a bunch of different things. Um, I've acted and done stunt choreography and um, a little bit of cinematography and all kinds of stuff. Um, but mainly I, I uh, do a little bit of writing and then I direct and, and help produce on other people's films as well. Um, yeah, I, that's that's the gist of what I do. <laughs> well, that's, that's how I discovered you. I, I I saw um, your work through the Valley of the Hunter and I was like, oh my goodness, who is this person? He's here in Utah. I just started like kind of doing a dive into who you were and I was just, I'm really fascinated with your work. I absolutely love it. And um, it was really fun diving in and then seeing your acting work as well. I'm just like, wow, you do so many amazing things. And so that's that's how I got to know you and just, um, um, I have a tendency to like stalk and fan girl over people. So <laughs> <laughs> that's how I discovered you. And it's been an absolute pleasure being able to work with you. So I, I appreciate yeah. you greatly. No, and I, I definitely loved working with you and really appreciate the work you did on Neighborhood, which was the last short film that um, we did. And, and that was, you were a huge help with all of, all of that. Um, on the back end and helping me stay sane a bunch so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> together we pulled together and, and yeah absolutely yeah, awesome. well thank you for giving me the opportunity to really um get in and see like the behind the scenes of of the indie filmmaking i i you know hadn't had the pleasure of really getting into that and through you i've um i feel a lot stronger connection to it and really love i think the art of it much more what is it for you that attracted you to go in like more of the indie route? Um, I mean, I think a lot of it has to do with the kind of stories that I like to tell. They're not typically things that um, would really appeal to like big studios or anything like that. Um, but I think more than anything, it, it really was the um, the desire to kind of do things my own way. Um, I, I, I hesitate saying that because I mean, everybody has their own way of doing things, but um, when I say that, I mean creatively, you know, um, there are definitely a lot of like rules and structure and things in, in filmmaking um, that I think people should adhere to uh, very strongly because they're there for a reason. But um, beyond that, in terms of the actual stories that we tell and how we tell them, that was, um, I just had some like bad experiences early in my career um, where a lot of creative control got taken away. Um, and so that was super important to me to, to just make sure that I always could tell the story that I wanted to tell in the way that I wanted to tell it. And then the other thing was just the, the like necessity, I guess, you know, like um, I don't have big connections or anything like that. I just, I make short films and produce on podcasts and, and do a bunch of other small things, but it's all done with like, you know, very little resources or funding or anything like that. It's just people who are really passionate about what they do um, coming together for, to, you know, to share their work and their art with other people. And so uh, that's really hard to bring money in for <laughs> without <laughs> a lot of you know pitch bibles and meetings in stuffy rooms and um that was never something i was super keen on um and i just like the challenge of you know how do how do you communicate something um in 
whatever way you can without needing to to like I, I guess I just didn't want to wait you know there were yeah. at the time I first started there were a lot of stories that I wanted to tell and I didn't want to wait until I had huge budgets and so the but I still wanted them to be good and appeal to people and so it really was about like okay how do how do we achieve the same thing how do we convey the same message or the same emotion or leave people with the same questions or thoughts at the end of this without needing to spend tons and tons of money or having a huge crew or um, anything like that you know and there are plenty of mistakes and things that you have to kind of sacrifice on along the way because of it but I think that um, especially for someone like me who's still very early in their career you know I've, I've made a bunch of short films but haven't done a feature yet or anything like that and um yeah really uh breaking your teeth in early without having to worry about the pressure of um you know people who loaned you money or anything like that and you're just practicing how to tell a story and convey a message in the yeah. best way possible and I think that's really what attracted me to your work is is how you mentioned to leave people asking the questions and thinking. And I think there's so much I can go in and watch your film and, and take from it and get the feelings from it. And then I can go back and watch and look at it from a more like, you know, a question and intellectual type. And it's there's so many layers to your work that it just that really, really resonates well with me. And I think that you do it very, very well. Um, oh, thank you. And, and the other part of that is I think because you, and I don't know if it's the why behind it, but with creating such a great work and then your passion about it and your desire to want to make a good project while learning and stretching, um, you're able to attract just amazing people to your project. Um, and I, I, if you, if you want to go in and, and, and talk about how neighborhood came about, I don't know if I mean, or if you, if you have another project that was really along the same lines of where it's so cohesive, like, what do you think really brought that about for you? Yeah, I think that Neighborhood was definitely the most cohesive out of all the ones I've done before and got to work with some of the most talented people, for sure. Like, there were some really fantastic people on that, particularly like my cinematographer Justice Page who is just amazing Shout and I was glad Justice. that I was yeah I was really really glad that I was like one of the last projects that he worked on here in Utah before he moved to Georgia um and and he was a big part of that um and I think you know I, I've asked Justice the same question of like why why he came on to this because we really didn't know each other much before that um, See, that's hard think, to believe, like, from my perspective, yeah. like, just how well and how beautiful everything was. Like, I'm sorry to interrupt, but that's oh, just no, you're amazing, fine. like, how well yeah. you guys seem to work together. No, most of the crew on that had not worked together before, ever. I think there was only one or two who had worked with me, but, like, and then Justice um, and his team had, had worked together as well. Um, but most people had never met before, like, the first day of, sh of shooting. Um, and so I think to, to answer your question, it, it really just comes down to um, having a story that you're really passionate about, like you said. Um, and then I, th I think a lot of it comes down to showing people that you, you care enough to really make this happen and mm -hmm. to value the work and the effort that they're going to put into it, especially on projects like this that are unpaid or very low paying um so all of my projects so far um we'll work on that man we'll work on that <laughs> no it, it really is just about having a vision and something unique that you want to do or uh, a way you want to tell a story and then really taking the time to look at, at other people's work and their passion and making sure that that matches your own um i think that's the biggest thing for me i would work with somebody who is very inexperienced, who I may have to actually teach things to on set, <laughs> no. um, but who, who is passionate and who cares about what you're doing and who you know is going to stick it out with you through, you know, the entire thing um, and who is going to 
give as much as you're going to have to give because it is a lot of work. Um, and every single person on Neighborhood, and, and I think on all the films that I've, I've worked on, thankfully, have all been people who are very passionate about filmmaking and um, really were passionate about the story that we were trying to tell and wanted to give their all to, to tell that story. And, you know, we were, especially my earlier films where we were all learning and figuring things out. And most of us had no idea what we were doing, um, but they were still really incredible experiences. And I think they turned out for all their flaws better than, you know, it could have because of that fact, because people were always so passionate and were so dedicated to what we were trying to do. And we're going to do their best no matter what the circumstances were, you know, no matter what equipment we were working in or conditions we were working in, um, they were there for the story. It wasn't for me, you know, I mean, some of them may have been doing initially, like I asked a favor or something like that to bring them on board. But at the end of the day, you know, they easily could have walked away or said no when things got hard. Um, and no one ever did because they were all there for the same reason. Um, so yeah, sorry, a kind of roundabout way, but I think that's really the biggest thing, no matter whether it is a paid project or not, is just making sure that you're surrounded by people who are as passionate as you are and who are going to help you see it through. Um, cause there's, yeah, it's always, no matter what, whether it's filmmaking or any other creative endeavor, like it's going to be hard and having people who are going to support you as much as they know that you'll be there to support them um, is really important. That's awesome. Um, what it, to me, from being able to work with you and, and what you're describing here is that you do a lot of research. Like, I, I know that you're very detail oriented in a lot of things, like you, you plan everything out, but it also sounds like you do that with the people. Like, it's not just, you really go into really kind of what makes them tick to see where they're going to fit in. And, and, and like you said, if they're going to be there in the long term, is there anything specifically that you do or for those watching that are, are new to filmmaking and want to break in, want to do some of the behind the scenes? Is there something that you recommend to them where they can stand out um, or what they should be doing to, to be seen and by um, directors and producers like, your, like yourself? to be able to, to get on great sets and work for wonderful people like you? Um, oh, thank you. Um, I don't know. That's, that's a hard question to answer because everybody's path, even when you listen to like A-list celebrities, like every single one of them has a very, very different journey that they, that they took. Um, so it's really hard to tell somebody like what to do to stand out or anything like that. I think the biggest thing is, I, well, two things, dedication and, and passion. I think just um, continually showing the same amount of effort, even when things get hard, um, by being very proactive about being supportive and not just constantly posting, you know, like, hey, I'm Dan, I see all the time, you know, they're the, kind of those people who every single uh, casting call on every single post they're commenting on saying like they want to do this even if it's not necessarily like a casting call or something they're like oh I'm down to act in it if, when you know even if you're a year away from that kind of a thing um, so there is such a thing as being overzealous but uh, <laughs> just short of that you just have to never stop and, and constantly be putting your best foot forward and be passionate and be humble, I think is, is mm. another big thing, you know, um, is just being very humble in the way you approach things of understanding that we are all learning. Um, and while there is a hierarchy on a film set, everybody there needs to be equal in their passion for what they're doing um, and, and really stick to that. So I think whatever your job is, you know, whether you first get on set as a production assistant or, um, I mean, anything, it's just whatever your job is that you, that first gets you onto a film set, um, do it well, do it passionately, um, and be humble about it, you know, and people will notice, um, 
I think that's where I've met most all of my crew um, is I either worked with them on another film set or somebody who I trust their opinion had worked with them on another film set and were really impressed with them. And even if they weren't necessarily knowledgeable in whatever area I needed them in, um, I knew that they were going to be there 100% and, and were going to be reliable and dedicated and passionate. Um, and like I said, that's way more important to me than, than somebody's experience level. Yeah. That's beautiful. And that's like that just each time you said all of that, I, I just keep picturing the neighborhood, like the, the casting crew, like that describes them so well. Um, what is it? Where, what direction are you focusing on, on now? Where are you? Are you primarily looking to create a feature? What, it, what is it that we can look forward um, to from you? Yeah, so um... I mean, I kind of have to compartmentalize the different things that I'm doing a lot of the time. Um, so while everything I do is about building a career as an indie filmmaker, I'm pretty flexible in what that means. You know, um, in the long run, I, I do want to be a, a director um, and be doing feature films. And I'm hoping to, to be doing one soon. Um, there's still a couple of things I have like in development and in the writing process that I'm kind of working on. Um, but while I work on those things, I have kind of a separate path of, of producing that just kind of keeps me active and helps me continue to learn while I, you know, so I'm not so focused on my own journey. Um, and that you'll see a lot sooner. Um, the future will take quite a while, but um the there's a lot of short films that I'm working with or short uh, short filmmakers um, who who have these short film projects um, that uh, I've been helping to produce um, just you know in varying like degrees one of them I I came on just to kind of help with the writing process and then stepped away for a bit and came back uh, to do cinematography on it with. Um, that was a really awesome project uh, from Emily Gardner um, that uh, she's in the editing process right now. So hopefully you'll get to see that pretty soon. Um, and uh, then there's a couple other shorts that are all in either pre-production or there's one or two that are in development. But I think there's about five in total that are should be shot like this year and then probably end up releasing at the end of this year, beginning of next year. Um, all from different directors who are just really fantastic and have really great stories and visions that I'm really excited just to like help as, as much as I can on. Because um, yeah, I think that's the biggest role. I mean, there's a lot of different roles and different types of producers, but I think the biggest thing for me is just, um, you know, lending experience to younger filmmakers um, and kind of helping them like, hey, these are the mistakes that I made earlier on and what you might want to want to avoid, um, I think is probably the, the biggest thing that I do. Um, and then, yeah, just, just uh, you know, like we initially met over um, script feedback and I still do some of that as well of just like doing consulting on, on different scripts and stories and stuff like that. But um, yeah, right well, now it's, it's pretty mellow compared to, you know, um, what I was doing a year ago where I was directing. That's a good thing. <laughs> that's, um, yeah. That's a good thing. A little bit. I mean, you handle it and you do it so well, but I'm from, for a personal, I'm glad that that maybe you're getting a little bit of uh, breathing room there. So, and on that note of um, helping out with the script, I just want to say, I, I don't know how much you want people jumping on that and, and um, reaching out to you for that. Mm -hmm. um, but absolutely wonderful. I think I thank you tremendously. And I don't think I've told you this, that um, the script that I brought to you, I was like horrified to share it with anyone, but I kind of like made myself. And you were so wonderful. Like you gave me so many great insights, different perspectives, things I didn't even think of. And at no time during the process did I feel dumb or less than or anything like that. So it was just a wonderful, great journey for me because now I'm tinkering around and, and, and working with other people and exploring and having fun. So thank you so much because it really is an outlet for me. And um, 
I think if the experience was much different, I would have just like, oh, no, no, see, I'm not a writer and just left it alone. So thank you so very much, Michael. That's, um, it, it's so much fun to explore now. And um, most of that is thanks to you. So thank you. So if you want to, how can they get in touch with you for that or for other projects? Um, I know Borland River Media, um, is it .com? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, first off, just thank you. I'm really glad that that helped as much because I, I do think it's important. My whole outlook with, with filmmaking now, I mean, I was a little more conceited when I first started, but especially over the past like two years or a year and a half even, um, that's, it's really shifted to just like, just there's no good films and, and bad films. I mean, there are bad films, but there's no, you know, in the, in the broader scheme, I'll say yeah. there's no good filmmakers and bad filmmakers. There's just people who want to tell a story and like, you know, um, you learn as you go and some people take a lot longer to, to learn, but you know, at the end of the day, like, it's just, I think everybody, if they have that passion deserves to have their story heard and, and, you know, it may not always be on a big screen, or it may not ever be a screen, it may just stay on the page, but whatever that story is that um, any artist wants to tell through whatever medium, I think, you know, I want to encourage that and support that, because I definitely felt that when I was first starting out, that I wasn't good enough, and that I, I mean, I still feel it, it's imp classic imposter syndrome all the time, you know, um, but that's, it's just the coming to the understanding that that's something that everybody feels at all times, no matter where in their career they are. And so um, personally, I, I find the best way to combat that is just working with other people and having other people to kind of remind you that everybody feels that way and that everybody's just learning and, and growing. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm really glad that that helped and that you stuck with it because I've really enjoyed working with you and, and it was a good script you know it was a good story Thank so you. <laughs> I you know always going to be supportive of that um but yeah in terms of where people can reach me um Instagram and uh is is always a, a good one I don't post super often to any of our accounts really but it is where we keep everybody updated um so that's at Borland River Media, B O R L A N D. Backwards. River Media. But uh, hey, you got the shirt. Yeah. <laughs> go to the website. You can order one. <laughs> I did. Yeah. Shameless uh, plug. <laughs> yeah, there's. Yeah, we've we've got some like little merch things up on there and and everything. But really, it's just a place for us to kind of share whatever we're 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 doing at that time. Um, same thing with like Facebook, Instagram. It's all Borland River Media. Um, and then yeah, neighborhood. Uh, is currently up on our website that you can rent for a couple bucks to watch it. Um, it was just our way of getting around. Like if anybody really wanted to see it, they could go see it while it was still on the festival circuit without it like kind of disqualifying us from a lot of festivals. Um, so it was kind of cheating it a little bit, but um, it will be out publicly once our festival circuit is, is done um, in a couple of months, you know, so um, eventually everybody will just be able to to see it but if you really want to watch it it's i i'm i think it's a pretty go great watch it now it's just a couple project. bucks it's it's <laughs> worth it biased, it's totally yeah. worth it <laughs> yeah um but yeah it's it's definitely a lot of a lot of fun um to just kind of share what we're working on and and stuff so i'm trying to do better and, and share more of it but um a lot of other things you know get your PR person on <laughs> crack the whip say get to work Melanie no 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 you know that's uh, that was for neighborhood and you don't need to yeah but um you're amazing and you know I definitely like I said really appreciate all the help you gave but yeah so Instagram is a is a great place um or through our website you can always reach out um through either of those um, or you can just reach out if you just have like questions and if people are just curious about different things I can you know you know I, I don't I don't think my Instagram is private or anything like that so people can just follow me and shoot me a message if they're curious about any of the stuff we're doing or any aspect of filmmaking I'm always happy to to respond so um, but yeah and then uh, just definitely keep a keep an eye out for more awesome projects I see Emily joined 
uh, or is watching the live stream and just popped up now. So she's the oh, one I was yeah. talking about. Um, that really awesome project that I, I got to DP on recently. That was a lot of fun. Um, oh, Cameron but, too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cameron too, our actor from uh, Neighborhood, who was amazing. So, um, but yeah, it, it's definitely, I think just, um, like I said, at, at the end of the day, just find cool people uh, who you like being created with and talking to and you know who you can I think more importantly be uh creatively critical with in a, in a healthy way mm -hmm. you know um that's very important who, yeah yeah and it's some people just don't vibe you know and that's totally okay it doesn't make either of you bad uh, most of the time you know <laughs> but um but yeah it some people just don't vibe and so don't take it personally when and this is, I don't know why this popped into my head, but random other advice. But yeah, just don't take it personally if you don't work well with somebody or if things don't work out because there's always going to be another project, especially in the like beginning stages, like where we're at, you know, just well, yeah, that's learn such... from it and move on and find people who you do vibe with and who you will be able to have that conversation with, you know. It's such an important point because I mean, it, it reminds me of from the acting perspective of going out for an audition and not getting it. It can be that you're not very good or you need to improve on something. But a lot of times it's just you're just not right specifically for that spot. And they've got to find that yeah. that exact fit. So that's a, an excellent point. It's not just for the actors. It's everything's got to flow. And when you find that magical flow, like when you take the time and put it together, it's just it's wonderful to work in that kind of environment. Yeah. So, yeah, it's awesome. the same thing with stories you know like i mean whether you're any kind of again like even if you're not you know a big thing for me was early on i didn't have people to work with um but you can take that same mentality into the what you are able to do whether you're painting or writing or shooting little short films in your living room or something you know um mm -hmm. just do it get it get it out there somewhere you know shove it in a hard drive so no one ever sees it but just do it um and then learn from it and move on to the to the next one you know i it feels like i've been doing this for so much longer than than i really have in all honesty i've only been directing and producing for about four three or four years now and i've only been studying filmmaking like as a career and, and as a something i was proactively pursuing for maybe six years seven um so but it feels like I've been just, this is all I've ever wanted. And it's, it's, I've just been struggling so hard. <laughs> like, you know, but in reality, like it's only been a little bit of time and there's still so much more to learn and to do and that never stops. And so just, yeah, just keep making stuff and being creative and, um, you know, learning and, and growing in whatever field you're in and find satisfaction in that because, um, chasing literally anything else whether it's views on youtube or followers or whatever else is just it's so draining i did it for so long and it it, it it it's just it's not worth it and it's just so much more personally fulfilling to just find people who you really vibe with and you love being creative with find stories that you want to tell or ways that you want to express yourself and just go for it and don't listen to anybody telling you that you know that it's a waste of time or or not worth it or that you're not good at it if at the end of the day if it makes you happy and who 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 cares if anybody else sees it like you know none of our short films have millions of views or anything like that but i i love making them and every time somebody does see them and says that they enjoyed it i'm like awesome that's a bonus because you know i i mostly made that for for me <laughs> so <laughs> glad you liked it too um and yeah that's how i just think, I, I personally how i think all art should, should kind of be viewed and, and all passions should be viewed of just like do them for you and if fame and fortune comes along with it then that's a cool bonus you know could you imagine if everyone in the world just like focused on creating and sharing their passion could you imagine what that would, would be, be like pretty amazing would it be yeah. awesome it would be really awesome uh well, thank you so much, Michael. I appreciate you being on here. I could talk to you all day long. Um, you're absolutely yeah. amazing. And, you know, as it goes, as it develops, 
definitely keep me in the loop on the feature. Anyone else, follow him, support him. He is on your way up. You keep going up. You keep going up. You focus and you get stuff done. So awesome. Thank, thank you. you for being here. All right. Yeah, have thank a, you. It was a lot of fun. All right. Have a great night. Thanks everyone for watching.